Welcome all. Today we have a topic, Rig Safety Officer Training, Day 1. These are our training topics today. The number one is introduction to petroleum or crude oil. Then what is rig? What is offshore and onshore? Rig types, offshore rig and onshore rig. The stream, there are three streams in the oil field. The first one is upstream, midstream and downstream. Next is we will learn offshore onshore rig hazards. What are the hazards associated with the rigs? Whether that is an off offshore rig or onshore rig. Then what is the HSC plan? What is HSC policy or safety policy? And the last but not the least, the different drilling phases. So let's start the session. Introduction to petroleum or crude oil. First of all, I want to say you the petroleum and crude oil both are the same thing. Petroleum is also known as crude oil or simply oil is a naturally occurring yellowish black liquid mixture of hydrocarbons and is found in geological formations in the rock beneath the earth. And if it is found uh, beneath the, the, the land, it, is, it will be called an onshore uh, project or onshore assignment. And if this, the crude oil or petroleum is found in the, in the water, in the below the sea floor, that time it will be called an offshore project, offshore rig. <clears throat> petroleum reservoirs can be found beneath the land or the sea floor. Crude oil is extracted with the GN drilling machine or drilling rig. Whenever it has been known by the seismic testing, seismic a kind of test uh, which is done by the geologist and in this test uh, they know that uh, there is the, the source of uh, crude oil in Benida uh, land or sea. So when, when we have uh, the, the drilling company has know that uh, there is a source of uh, the crude oil or petroleum um, in the reservoir or beneath the, beneath the earth or beneath the sea floor in the geological formation. After that, the drilling operation is started to extract the, uh, you can say the treasury or um, um, crude oil or natural gas. Crude oil is composed of hydrocarbons, which are mainly hydrogen, carbon, and the nitrogen, sulfur, and oxygen, and other elements are also mixed uh, with it, but very in very low uh, quantity. And then, uh, small, very small and comprehensive definition of hydrocarbon. What the hydrocarbon is? A hydrocarbon is an organic compound consisting mostly of hydrogen and carbon. And hydrocarbon can be found in three states of matter, gas, liquid, and the solid. And uh, reservoir. Reservoir, when you will uh, work in the oil field, the drilling um, assignments in the rig, whether offshore and onshore, you will hear the reservoir. Reservoir um, is nothing but uh, a place beneath the earth or beneath the sea where there is the accumulation of the crude oil or natural gas. It's called the reservoir. Petroleum, reservoir petroleum is found in underground pockets called reservoir. What I said earlier actually, the, the place beneath the earth or beneath the sea where there is accumulation or storage of naturally storage of uh, the crude oil or natural gas, that pocket will be called the reservoir. And in oil field, the amount of petroleum in a reservoir is measured in the barrels or tons. Whenever we read any article about the oil field, we, we read again and again the barrel. So in the most um, places of work, actually, the oil is measured through the barrel. And one barrel is equal to 42 gallon and one gallon is equal to 3.78 liters. 
Crude oil is frequently found in reservoirs along with the natural gas. Whenever, after the drilling, when the crude oil is extracted, it, uh, it is mostly mixed with uh, the natural gas and uh, it is also mixed with uh, the mud and sometimes water and uh, H2S and CO2. And uh, one more thing, I, I, I should say that the methane is also because methane um, is also present uh, in all the phases of the oil um, uh, related activities. Methane is also present in the drilling. It's also present in the production or also present in the transportation of the crude oil. Is petroleum liquids may be too difficult, dangerous or expensive to drill. The drilling assignment is not gonna easy, whether it's um, in off onshore or offshore. The drilling operation or drilling assignment is difficult, it is tough, it is dangerous and expensive also, but the offshore drilling is more expensive than onshore drilling. Why? Because uh, in offshore, um, the drilling company has to arrange or uh, uh, establish an, 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 a structure on that they, they can um, commission their drilling equipments. The first reason. The second reason is um, they have to arrange uh, uh, the canteen and facility, food facility on, on the offshore drilling itself and uh, the transportation of uh, the crew and the service companies and audit companies uh, through the chopper uh, from the offshore rig to the um, air base or to the head office. And uh, these are the reason uh, the offshore uh, drilling is more ex expensive than onshore drilling. Successful drilling sites can produce for oil about 30 years. 30 years. So the well which are more productive and successful in the successful category, it means that well is producing um, that uh, the crude oil around uh, 30 years or 40 years. And uh, in, in a very few oils in the oil history, history it has been found and experienced um, even even they could not um, produce the crude oil even a, a, more than a one year so drilling rig is very drilling project is very expensive sometimes uh, they um, uh, invest millions of dollars for the for extracting the crude oil uh, but in many cases, but the, these cases are very least, very less actually. The few wells in the in the history actually in the oil field uh, could not produce the crude oil even as more than one year. So what is rig? So it's a very interesting uh, subject or topic. Many of my friends actually are confused. They mix. This rig, actually this rig is not only rig, this is a drilling rig. This is a drilling rig. Same, they, they just uh, mix this rig with the rigger or the rigging, the lifting and rigging. So here it is, here is very small definition about the rig. What is rig? A drilling rig is an integrated system and combination of multiple equipment that drills wells in land and water. If it drills in the land, it will be called onshore rig or onshore uh, well or onshore assignment. If this, if the rig is involved to drilling in the water, it will be called offshore drilling, offshore rig, and offshore assignment. Actually, here it is telling about the drilling rig. The drilling rig is not a single equipment. The, the drilling rig is a combination of multiple equipments. The combination and assembling of multiple equipments and after the combination um, uh, and uh, assembling and commissioning uh, the entire um, the entire and all the equipments uh, a, a, a rig is uh, um, uh, commissioned or rig is ready for the drilling to extract the crude oil or natural gas from the reservoir or from the source. 
so the next uh, topic is what is offshore and onshore offshore here i just tried to give a very small but comprehensive and understandable definition so that all the uh, all my friends can understand very easily what exact that topic is so the offshore offshore refers to activities any kind of activity operation and the project located on the seabed to extract the oil and gas that will be called offshore and here is example an image of offshore rig and onshore onshore refers to activities operation and project located on dry land to extract the oil and gas so that will be called an onshore so it means it is very clear now the any assignment any rig any operation uh, which is being done in the sea in the water that will be called that will, that, that will be called offshore and any rig which is um, involved to extract or drilling um, to, um, in the in the land that will be called onshore rig or onshore well onshore assignment so so here it is here is uh, rig types offshore rig and onshore rig so this is the drilling rigs so so we will see the first the land rig the land rig the first type of the rig is there are two kinds of rig actually one is land rig onshore rig that is onshore rig is called land rig and the second is marine rig marine rigs means offshore rigs and in the marine rig or offshore rig there are um, various types of the rigs and all the rigs are used in the in the assignment in the project according to the requirement of uh, the well depth according to the uh, requirement of uh, the water depth in the offshore so as for the requirement the the specific drill rig drilling rig will be used the first one is the jackup jackup rig the next is semi submersible rig the third one is drill ship the fourth is submersible rig and the fifth is platform this all five are the offshore rigs the oil industry had been categorized in three different category the first is upstream the second is midstream and the last is downstream so we will see here upstream what is the upstream upstream means exploration and drilling exploration means to exploring and and finding the source of um, crude oil or natural gas it means to um, finding the reservoir by specific kind of testing which is called seismic seismic actually and it is done by the geologist okay geoscientists geologists geology engineers actually so the operation for example to to finding uh, the source or finding the reservoir or the uh, of crude oil and natural gas beneath the earth whether that is onshore or offshore and after finding the reservoir the drilling is called the upstream upstream exploration and drilling is a term for the operations stages in the oil and gas industry that involve exploration and production upstream activities include exploration drilling and ex and extraction the next is midstream midstream here i wrote here i wrote in in, in a bracket so that you, you have to read this three four lines and you have to understand you have to make your notes if you want uh, but for good understand understandability and for the good remembering actually i just wrote here so that oh midstream it means storing and transporting so this is the the uh, thing i uh, mentioned here so that it it will be easy for you all to remember the what is the specific meaning of that particular stream or oh, midstream it means storing and transporting midstream is a term used to describe one of three major stages of oil and gas industry operations midstream activities include the storing and transporting oil natural gas midstream includes the what are the mediums through which the this uh, crude oil or natural gas are transported to the uh, other location from uh, the place where it has been extracted from the source or reservoir so the pipeline through the pipeline we transferred the crude oil uh, tank trucks 
rail tank cars and like that and all these mediums are used as per the distance and as per the economical benef beneficial aspects and the third one is the downstream downstream means refining sales and distribution and all the refineries petrochemical plants these all come under the downstream the downstream Operations are the processes involved in the con in converting oil and gas into the finished products. These include refining crude oil into gasoline, gasoline means petrol, diesel, and a variety of other energy sources like um, jet fuels, heating oils, asphalt. So these are the things which are obtained um, uh, by the refining of crude oil. So these all operations and activities are done in the refineries so here is, is an image of oil refinery after the drilling the crude oil and natural gas that is processed that is transported to the refineries for the further treatment so that the uh, finished product will be achieved by the refining and after the refining the crude oil and natural gas there are multiple uh, finished and semi-finished products and by-products are achieved actually. So the next uh, topic is offshore, onshore rig hazards. In the HAST category, I have tried to accumulate and mention all of, uh, around all the hazards related to the rig actually, whether that is offshore rig or onshore rig. In the next slides, you will see and you will find that I tried to mention the most of the hazards related to the offshore uh, or onshore rig. The number one is offshore rig is dangerous. One reason for its complex equipment needed to drill such depth. As I said, actually, rig is not a single equipment. Rig is made or prepared or made ready after the after the assembling and combination of multiple equipments. And when all the equipments are merged, assembled together. And then what we get, that is the rig actually. Now, there are multiple equipments which make the rig. And, and after that, the rig has one mission to drill, whether that is rock, whether that is seabed, that is land, onshore and offshore, and to, uh, to achieve and extract the treasure. It means the crude oil and natural gas. So, because um, here it's meaning that, um, because there are multiple equipments are there actually who makes the rig so the the maintenance of those uh, was each equipment and each equipment has their own specific hazards so that's why it is dangerous of offshore rig and onshore rig as well danger is the harsh offshore environment the environment of the offshore is not as normal as in the land where we see when where we live actually so Sometimes in some places the, the, the oxygen level is also less lesser than 19.5 percent sometimes the salty water is there in the offshore okay in ice and storm in the European and and, and, and Canadian uh, offshore uh, rigs actually in, in if you work in on uh, Middle East in Middle East if you work in um, the um, onshore onshore assignment onshore rig there is a uh, uh, high wind, high wind in many times, and and um, wind storm actually also with the wind storm, the wind is, uh, flows with the air. So this is also a dangerous aspect of the rig. And distance from the land makes it harder for additional rescue personnel to promptly reach the areas in emergency situation and for medical emergency too. And because the offshore rig is located and onshore rig is located far from the city. And if it is offshore rig, we are, if we talk about the offshore rig, offshore rig is located in, in, in the sea, actually. If any person got injured by any reason, he, he, he got injured. And, and after giving uh, him the first aid, I, I, one thing I want, to, I want to share here, there is a certified doctor or certified paramedic, and one clinic is available in all the rigs in all the rigs, whether that is offshore rig and onshore rig. So if, for example, the injured person has been given the first aid by the available uh, rig site paramedic or the doctor, but he needs more medical care, 
so for that he needs to be transported to the to the land to the to the nearest um, a hospital where all the facilities are available what that injured person needs and the second aspect related to this if any emergency happens in the offshore reef for example the fire and explosion for example the h2s leak the hydrocarbon leak for example um the the storm the, the storm is there and uh, in this situation to evacuate from that offshore rig is also a dangerous and tedious task it's not easy so these all are reason and causes which make the the working uh, in offshore rig is stuff it's not easy the next is fire and explosion fall and falling tools sometimes a person can fall from the height from the monkey boat from the crown block for any kind of maintenance activity he is he went up he can fall even from the mud tank he can fall from the rig floor as well maybe any tool or any material can fall from the height so the falling hazard is very dangerous aspect in the rig toxic vapors and gases such as h2s such as uh, hydrocarbon dropped objects the dropped objects slip and trip machines used for drilling cause noise and vibration the machines the equipments which are used in the drilling operation they cause uh, too much noise and vibration and uh, the operation which produce most more noise that is uh, drilling and tripping the chemical exposure because in the rig uh we use uh, uh, the the chemicals to make our drilling mud drilling fluid so there are the um, these are the dangerous the chemical the chemical exposure so there is specific training for uh, the persons for the persons there are there are specific uh, uh, ppes uh, for the persons who are involved in the mixing and handling of the chemicals stuck by caught in and caught between confined space ergonomical hazards high pressure lines hoses and equipment uh, for example when the pressure testing is done with the pumping operation such as cementing electrical hazards manual handling radiation uh, when the well log, uh, uh, logging operation is done there is a radioactive source is used so radiation is also one of the uh, biggest danger uh, dangerous aspect in the rig the fatigue because um, that that is uh, 12 hours uh, uh, continuous shift and 7 days in a week so um, sometimes uh, due to the, the the temperature changes too much cold too much hot weather so uh, the person get fatigue so because he works to 12 hours hazards related to crane crane a forklift and man lift um, if a forklift uh, Uh, and a man lift it is an onshore rig and if it is onshore rig the mobile crane will be used there so it, these all equipments has their own hazardous uh, aspects as well and if it is an offshore rig there will be pedestal crane will be used in the offshore pedestal crane and vehicle collision if it is onshore rig there is a chances of vehicle collision sometime any vehicle uh, who is transporting the the rig crew from site to the to the main camp or maybe any material uh, transportation trolley or truck has come to the site maybe any service company a vehicle has come over there so um, vehicle uh, collision the chances the vehicle can um, um, hit the any rig structure rig equipment so um, and vehicle collision is only related, is uh, chance chances in the onshore rig and one thing um all the vehicles who come um in the onshore i'm talking about this point about the onshore and if any um vehicle uh come within the 100 feet of the well that vehicle must be equipped with the um uh, spark arrestor see the 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 has the engine generator set the oil leaks this this is also one of the hazard electrical connections if the electrical connections has not been done properly guards on rotating equipments if the the guards missing on the rotating equipment keep water away from the electrical equipment and motor 
never use uh, water fire extinguisher for uh, or water hydrant for electrical related fire mud tank hazards the uh, the multiple permit um, for confined space because uh, one permit is um, uh, if anybody has to do any inspection or maintenance kind of activity inside the mud tank he needs the confined space space permit he needs the isolation um, isolation permit and um, <coughs> that's why the more than one permit is, is required for the mud tank floor openings floor opening in the top of the mud tank and the, is the floor opening is there missing any piece of uh, the gratings isolation on agitators and um, each agitator inside the mud tank has the has its own specific number unique number so that it could make uh, easy for isolation slip and trip hazard in the mud tank shell shaker heat generated by the drilling fluid, slip and tripping on the grating, guards on rotating part, noise, uh, floor opening, chemical exposure, choke manifold, high pressure lines, and creep hazard. Offshore and onshore rig in this consequence, um, this is our um, uh, place of work, the rig, uh, rig floor. This is the heart of any rig actually, and most of the operations of the rig is done on the rig floor. The rig floor is also said deck floor. Deck floor. Uh, what are the hazards? Maybe in the rig floor, slip, trip, and fall due to the any slippery substance is um, any mud over there, water over there, um, or any um, any object, any material, any tools, any chain actually, any hose in in the in crossing the rig floor that can be the reason for the trip. So pinch points, there are so many machineries, for example, the tong, which is used by the floor man, the tongs, the, the, or any, any machinery where there is a chance of the pinching of any part of the body. Drop objects, noise and vibration, chances of hit by the pipe casing and tubular when the, pi when the pipe or casing and tubulars are being lifted from the catwalk to the rig floor or being laid down from the rig floor to the um, um, um uh, cat, catwalk so there is a chance of uh, uh, the heat by these of these objects if not lifted uh, properly the chemical exposure heat stress fatigue heat stress uh, this uh, was is repeated the heat stress okay the radiation as i said earlier the radiation in the well logging operation actually the radioactive source is used so the radiation is also um even uh, the even uh, okay that will be very long if I explain the everything uh, in the late in the in the later uh, videos the next videos I will explain the everything more more explanation the more topic about the equipments of the rig what are their functions what are their hazards what is the HSC audit what are the responsibilities of safety officer in a daily basis when he is assigned in a rig site high wind and sand storm this is these all are the hazards um, related to the rig floor. BOP, BOP stands for blowout preventer. There's high pressure lines, drop objects, draw works. This draw works equipment is located on the rig floor. It is an hoisting uh, uh, equipment. <clears throat> Hazards is rotating um, uh, equipment and uh, there is a rotating part in the inside the draw works actually and the trip trip chances trip there's a chances of the trip whenever the person um, goes to maintain meant to do the maintenance of the draw works so these all are the hazards related to the offshore and onshore rig actually okay the next um, uh, the next stuff is hsc plan what is hsc plan uh, many of you actually heard and know what is hsc plan the same HSC plan, what is used in the downstream in your construction assignment, construction or maintenance or manufacturing uh, facilities, that is the same thing used in the rig HSC plan. HSC plan is a document that describes how the contractor meets the project's requirements and manages the identified HSC risk while performing the applicable activities during the execution of the contract. Well, the HSC uh, plan highlights the HSC policy 
the HSC policy of that company, HSC resources, what are the HSC resources are available by the contractor, roles and responsibilities of the personnel, and uh, safer practices, management of occupational health, environment, equipment, and emergency management. So these all things are mentioned in HSC plan. And before um, uh, um, acquiring any assignment, any project from the client, the, the, the contractor has to submit his HSC plan specific to that project to the client for approval. First, the client HSC department or review the HSC plan of the contractor and they find if it is suitable, then they approve the HSC plan and all the activities in the at the site and the rig site will be uh, done according to that HSC plan. The next is HSC policy. What is health and safety policy? It is an it is an kind of uh, um, written document by the company, by the contractor, to the management, or by to the all employees, to the visitor actually. So what uh, what is exactly is a health and safety policy is a document outlining and organizations and organizations. It means the contractor, any any organization, even the client as well, because the client also has a HSC plan. The client also has HSC policy. Okay, so organizations commitment and approach to managing health and safety in the workplace, protecting their employees, customers, and environment as well. And its objective is to zero harm, zero harm to the environment, to the, to the workforce, to the visitor, to the customers, and the employees are the biggest asset for the company, for any of the company. Now, this is the last topic of the session the different drilling phases. The drilling project has multiple phases. Number one is preparing, preparing the rig site, drilling, well completion, production, intervention. It means the well intervention. It is also said with other name that is rigless and well abandonment. These are the phase, phases of the drilling project. So the first one is preparing the rig site first build the pads the pad it means where the the where it will be the it will be drilled where the well will make the pad should be ready pads and access roads the access road from the main road to the site if it is onshore in offshore then the um, jack up rig will be used and uh, drill ship will be used uh, drill ship rig will be used uh, semi submersible rig will be used and submersible rig will be used according to the requirement of the project. Safety procedures and obtaining relevant permits beforehand, the start of the drilling process can begin. All this preparation will be done first, then drilling. Uh, during this stage, we make the well. We drill the, the, the well and we make the well. First, the drill rig is brought to the location. Maybe uh, 20 and 30 truck loads uh, and put together and I mean it means the assembled assembled together if it is onshore the 20 or 30 uh, truck loads will come for uh, for all the equipments to assemble the rig at the drilling site if it is offshore then all the the all the equipments will be uh, transported through the ship or uh, uh, barge to the drilling um, drilling point well completion prepare the well ready for the production after the drilling after the drilling the well has to be made ready for the production in this phase different tools are inserted in the in in this in the in in this phase for example uh, the um, uh, uh, casing cementing and uh, the, um, uh, the tubulars the um, are, are installed and uh, um, uh, safety valve is installed in this multiple equipments uh, are installed in this uh, phase that is will completion and next is the production the production is during this stage we earn money by production of oil and gas the simply and if uh, it, the well is product producing the oil uh, for uh, for um, two years or 15 years or 10 years or may or after 18 years uh, so, between the productive life of a well or after the productive life of a well, 
the well needs some mechanical maintenance any unconventional um, work actually maintenance work and that is called intervention the well intervention and why this is done why this is needed because there is some reason the production has declined maybe the reason can be the uh, due to the flow restriction the, re the flow is restricted for example um, uh, as a, one thing i want to tell you here that if the well is if well is good an offshore rig is, is good that well is good offshore well is good so it's a, a, a good and productive offshore well produces around 20000 barrel of crude oil every day so if with the time two years ten years as i said earlier by any reason the production declines or any mechanical failure of any equipment or due to the damage of the uh, subsurface equipment due to the collision is there due to the any um, uh, deficiency came in in that particular equipment so fix and remove those deficiency and the reason why the production declines to remove and sort out the problem the well intervention is done and well intervention is called the unconventional or unconventional operation those may be due to the flow restrictions changes in reservoir characteristics uh, sand production sand is coming more actually more sand is coming in the with the crude oil mechanical failure uh, mechanical failure means as i said earlier uh, there are any um, mechanical equipment um, deteriorated or uh, corroded or damaged for example the electrical pump that will be the safety valve that might be the the um, uh, production tubing okay and then in increase the production from the well so due to all reason the well intervention is done in a well and the last is the well abandonment well abandonment is the last phase of a well lost and plug the well in this phase when the economic life of a well is over and the 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 there is the, that well is producing the, the crude oil uh, that is uh, not uh, more satisfactory or not more productive the maintenance cost of that well is is more than what that well is producing so in this situation the well is uh, permanently shut down and plugged and well head removed and considered safe and secure by the regulators this is achieved by filling the, the tubing is removed and the filling uh, the well with the cement and this returns the land to its initial state it was made um, uh, an as normal as it was earlier before drilling so this is a regulatory requirement and it should be done so that uh, why because uh, uh, if the very minor uh, flow of the hydrocarbon is coming for example we do not apply these applications okay that well is not useful for for the company or for the particular uh, oil company but they just left that oil in the in that situation in that condition and the very minor hydrocarbon is coming out it may uh, contaminate the fresh water zone in inside the uh, in the um, geological formation and uh, uh, that's why that's why this that well is the tubing is removed and the um, and the cementing is poured in that and so that uh, the hydrocarbon could not uh, contaminate the fresh water zone and uh, that area was can be made as normal and as uh, um, uh, you know uh, hazard hazard free and harm free as it was earlier before the drill so that's why the well abandon abandonment is also a, a, a important um, activity in this phase so uh, thank you very much for uh, giving your time and it was uh, a short and little effort from my side uh, to uh, to share all this information and uh, uh, please uh, subscribe my channel and share my channel my videos with your friends Thank you very much for your time.